while you were sleeping at a negation TTH episodes 11 part 2 inches. At the station, Hongju gets two new stacks of business cards and her son B reporter Bong tells her she'll need them all because the personnel has turned over at the police station and the prosecutor's office in the year she was away. Bong Sung B is a hard ass and tells Hongju to know what's happening at the police and fire departments and the prosecutor's office at all times, but she seems used to this and sighs that it's begun. Officer Wu Tak and his partner come back to mom's restaurant in an effort to get back on her good side. They declare that they don't need a cash receipt this time, but mom nags that upright police officers shouldn't be like that, hey. I love that they have such a hard time figuring her out. Wu Tak insists that he's not here to see Hong Ju, but he cranes his neck when the door opens, and mom watches him with a smile. To his delight though, Hong Ju is waiting for Wu Tak at the police station, where she's doing her rounds. She hands him her card and says she's back at work. Since she can't have spent her life just being pretty, and adds a hair flip for a good measure. The female officer who has a crush on Wu Tak looks disappointed to see him so friendly with another woman, and even his partner wonders if Wu Tak and Hong Ju are something more. You mean you really just thought he loved Sam Up so that much? Hongju jumps nervously when Bong Sunbi calls like clockwork to hear her latest report, and she begs Wu Tak to give her something, anything to say. He says there's a string of serial cat killings in the area, with a death toll now over a hundred. Hongju's eyes widen at that as she relays it to her Sunbi, and Wu Tak runs when she seems satisfied with the tip. At the prosecutor's office, Jay Chan learns that he minutes has been assigned chicken up a Kang Dahi's case, which prosecutor Lee says is the traffic accident he processed the night he was on call for Jay Chan. The insurance claim and murder charge ring a bell and Jay Chan thinks back to his dream, wondering if this is the same man who killed his brother and sister. But has told that the sister is still alive. Which confuses him. Jay Chan asks if there's a chance the culprit could go free, but Prosecutor Lee says he confessed after being arrested. The problem, though, is that his defense lawyer is Yu Bum. Yu Bum and he minutes meet at the vending machine before their trial, and he says it's unusual that they'll have two female justices on their trial, which he says concerns him a little. Hoping that the trial is fair. One of the judges in question happens to walk upright behind him as he says this, and points out how odd it is that no one seems to question the sex of the judges when it's three men, when three men to zero women is actually far more skewed. Right? As they wait for the trial to begin, Defendant Daihee asks Yubum what their probability of winning is, and Yubum says it's 99 to 1. Daihee assumes he means that they're 1, but he smiles and says they're the 99. At the same time, Prosecutor Lee assures Jay Chan that they have a 99% chance of winning, and that they really have to win, because he messed up the night of the car accident by signing off on the medical examiner not conducting an autopsy. Jay Chan isn't as sure and keeps asking for confirmation that they can win. He minutes lays out the case in her opening statement. Die he failed at a few investments and had his brother sign up for seven different insurance policies, after which he caused a car accident and killed his brother on purpose in order to collect 2.7 billion won in insurance money. To her surprise, the defense pleads not guilty. Over lunch, 
he minutes tells her colleagues that she's glad he pleaded not guilty instead of trying to lessen the sentence, but Jay Chan still feels like something's off about this. He wonders if Yu Bum Kuld had his client confess on purpose in an effort to keep the police investigation perfunctory, knowing that it overturned things in trial. Prosecutor Son agrees with Jay Chan, and he sends her finger hearts for taking his side, he. Though shocked when their boss prays silently by himself, but he tells them that they'll pray separately to themselves from now on, and even tells he minutes to consider Jay Chan's warning. Wow, did Hong Ju do all that with her speech the other day? I'm retroactively more impressed with her. He minutes passive aggressively praises Jay Chen for coming up with such a wise warning so far beyond his mere months of work experience, dousing her poor lunch with mounds of pepper for emphasis. Jay Chen complains about it to someone that night while vacuuming and looking like has made up for a photo shoot. Pwa ha 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 ha. Did you literally get dressed up to star in Han Ju's dreams? This is priceless. When someone argues that his overthinking he minutes come back, Jay Chan ends up vacuuming someone instead, only to remember halfway that Han Ju might see. So he suddenly turns robotically polite, which just scares someone more. Someone belatedly notices Jay Chan's hair and calls him out for wearing BB cream. He smiles smugly when he realizes that Jay Chan is doing this because of Hong Ju's dreams, and teases him mercilessly. Jay Chan raises the vacuum at him, and then suddenly recalls that Hong Ju warned him of this very scenario. It dawns on him that she already saw this in her dreams too. And he collapses on top of someone in defeat, wailing, she's a human CCTV. On Tuesday ends with a staff briefing, where Bong Sun B tells her to follow the serial cat killer story. He insists that there's something worth digging into here, pointing out that a common precursor to serial murder is animal killings. Hong Ju sighs. Wanting to cover human stories, not cats. In Sami Own's dream, Hong Ju trembles nervously as Dai He climbs the stairs on a stormy night, his hand covered in blood. She's huddled in a corner with someone in sneakers, maybe Dai He's little sister? And Hong Ju says out loud, Jay Chan Shi, if you happen to see this moment in your dreams and She screams, and they take off running with Dai He behind them. Jay Chan wakes from the dream covered in sweat. Ruro, it's raining outside and, 